Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, we're going to look at SPL troubleshooting. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Troubleshooting SPL, that doesn't sound right. That sounds like if you have a failure, you have to figure out what's wrong with it. Well, SPL is kind of the same thing. If you get a result that you're getting that's different than expected or inconsistent with your prior testing, you've got to figure out why. So here's what we're going to do. This is our setup from the last video. If you haven't seen that, take a look at it so this will make a little bit more sense. I'm going to address a few things. One, I went through your comments. I found some common things of your responses of why we got the results that we got. And I'm either going to explain why that is not the case, or I'm going to make a change here to show you uh, what happens based on your comments. So if you comment on the last video, make sure you hang out for this one. So this is our setup. We've got two eights. And what we found out before is if we had this other box just simply here, there's a massive loss. And then when you double power or you double the cone area, you did get some of it back, but not what you were expecting. Uh, doubling cone area, we should have gained 3 dB by putting this sub in even on the same power. And uh, by having double the power, and double the cone area, we should have gained six, but we didn't. Uh, we gained like one and a half. Uh, so way out of line of what should have happened there. Now I do have a bit of a confession. I knew when I put this other box in here, what was going to happen. I knew exactly what was going to happen. And the reason is I built one of these boxes. I don't remember which one seven years ago and I refined it a little bit. I got it figured out. I got one sub doing really well. So I thought, I'm just gonna build another box just like it, and it should be awesome. So I built another identical box, and that's the result that I got seven years ago. I never really got into figuring out why that was the case, or fooling with it a whole lot. So I built this box, and this is a scaled version of those two boxes. It is exactly double the volume, double the port area, which I had to custom make an eight and a half inch port to make it the exact same port area. We've got the same tuning. Everything is the same in scale, not exactly in dimension. I had to blow it out sideways, um, you know, tall and that kind of thing to make sure this would fit in the car how I wanted it to. But the reason We've got one sub in the front and one sub on the side, and the port is because of how it's going to sit in the car, and I'll show you that in a bit. But this goes back to another box that I had that was back here, where the sub was right here and the port was firing that way, and that worked out really well uh, before I got to this design. So I coupled what I knew about what this wasn't working, and then this one in the single sub, how it was working, and thought, I'll combine those two things, and surely that's got to work. So this box will be introduced to compare to the results of these boxes, but I will also take into consideration things that you said and other things that we might look at and actually do the testing on that and see what result we get. Now, I know you're thinking, how does that tie into troubleshooting? Well, consistency in data. Whenever you're doing any SPL testing, uh, some good information to have, and this would require just actually having a notebook, just taking notes as I do. Uh, some of it I remember, but a lot of it I, I do take notes on. Uh, the input voltage that you consistently test with on the amp, the temperature uh, of the environment that you're testing in, if you're doing outside, is it warm, cold, whatever. I'm in my shop, my shop is actually climate controlled, so I can change that year round, I can keep it the same temperature, keep all my testing consistent. But uh, having the voltage in and uh, impedance that it's playing at, uh, temperature, humidity, all that stuff is a factor. And then there are other things like sub positioning and what box you're actually using, the tuning, uh, all that stuff. Very good to know if you write all that stuff down so you can compare and at different volume levels because it doesn't always act the same at low power as it does on high power or anywhere in between. So if you're building for a power class, 
you need to test for that power class. It might be optimal at one power and not at another. So onto the comments of what was mentioned. Um, one thing that I will point out here is some of the comments said that the testing was done wrong. Something was absolutely wrong with the test because I didn't get 3db when I doubled power and I didn't get 3db when I doubled cone area. So the test is wrong. That's not really how scientific testing works. Uh, you don't have a result that you want and then manipulate the testing to get it to the result you want. And just because you didn't get the result that you want, doesn't mean the testing is wrong. You should be conducting a test with no bias at all. And the results that you get is the data that you get. You have to accept those results for what they are. So if the results aren't what you want, they just aren't what you want. Change what you're doing to make it try to get to your goal. I don't say the result you want, but your goal. So nothing with the test was wrong. You watched all of it. I, everything was consistent. You only change one factor at a time. That is key when you're doing SPL. If you want to see what gains, you change one thing at a time. You don't change more. Uh, another thing, it is called a theory and not a law uh, because a theory is something that you believe to be correct that you're trying to test or may not always be correct. Whereas a law is concrete. It will always be the same every time like Newton's third law of physics, which is in nature, uh, any force that you put on something will have an equal and opposite force back. That is a law. It will always be that way. It will always be precisely just that. You apply a force, you get equal force back. That's a law, not a theory. So keep that in mind with theories is it something that should happen and commonly happens but may not always happen so uh on to the next point 3db for displacement and power they said no you'll only gain 3db if you do power and cone area which is not accurate you gain 3db for displacement not to be confused with cone area but actual displacement if you have both subs moving at the same rate x max wise and they're the same cone area you'd have the same displacement so that is one way to gain three and then the other is from power if you do both of those things that's three plus three which for you math majors is six uh the next point um the box was absorbing the sound uh when the other one was disconnected it's wood doesn't exactly absorb it so well. It doesn't absorb it so well, that's why you use it for an enclosure because it does reflect, it does not absorb. So the box itself is not absorbing anything. That's not what it does when a sub is in it, so it wouldn't do it when a sub is playing. Um, disconnected sub was absorbing. This is something that we will actually look at. Uh, I will come back to that one here uh, after these other points. The sub absorbing it uh, is actually how passive radiators work that increases output uh, through how you do tuning and that kind of thing. Depending on the mass, if you know how passive radiators work, I won't get into all that. But quite literally, the energy uh, from the environment or the enclosure moving that sub can increase SPL. Uh, it will not just absorb it the changing in cabin volume. So that enclosure is one cubic foot and then the port displacement on there is maybe another 0.25 or 0.3 or something like that. So let's just say for a nice round figure, we'll say 1.5 cubic feet that the cabin uh, volume has changed. Now this entire cabin is over 70 cubic feet. So that's 1 70th of it. And um, doesn't seem like a very large percentage and it's not but let's assume that that 170th could actually affect it i myself or any other human is occupying more than one and a half cubic feet so when there's a 2 db loss you're saying if you get in the car you're going to lose 2 db which isn't the case uh, that would also mean if you had like two people in it it might lose 4 db or 5 db or who knows but that's simply not the case uh, that could be as simple as changing amps would 
you know, you go to a bigger ramp and you lose SPL because it took up more volume. Um, you had something else, person to person would have different SPL that would vary wildly, which is not the case. Uh, additionally, if you watch the entire video, um, when I spun one box around, I got a different SPL result, so the volume didn't change in the car at all. And then if I metered one sub versus the other sub in those same positions, you got a different result. So again, the volume of the car was not changing and you got different results. So it's not volume related uh, in the car. Uh, another random one was gravity. Gravity only affects matter. Uh, sound waves are not matter. That is uh, a frequency bandwidth moving through the air, um, which is not matter. Matter is something tangible you can touch an object that has a molecular structure to it. Uh, so no, it's not gravity. But going back to the sub absorbing, there's a few things that we can do here uh, to check that. One, we can leave the box in and take the sub out. We're gonna do that. And then we're also gonna block off the end of the port. So the box is still gonna be there, but sound cannot enter in from the port entry itself and the sub itself uh, can't be moving from any pressure. So we're gonna test those two things and see what results we get. So to have accurate data, we have to have a baseline. Same day, same testing. We don't wanna go off other days if something may have miraculously changed. I have been driving the car, so the sensor could be in a slightly different position or any other number of things. But we want to compare same day, same everything. So we need a baseline. And uh, I've got both subs connected. Then I will test one sub connected and then I will start making the changes. Now, I reversed the phase on one sub because it's facing the opposite direction. And there were some comments that I should not have reversed the phase of that sub because the frequency wavelength of the frequency being played is not long enough to make a difference. So, also in part of troubleshooting, I will show you what happens first with the one sub out of phase, which would make it in phase in the car. And then I will reverse the phase so they are both uh, positive, positive, negative, negative, but facing the wrong direction. So you can see exactly what happens if you go to install uh, your subs in your car and something doesn't sound quite right or you think you'd have more output. So we're gonna see what happens there. So here is our baseline testing. now reverse the phase on one sub. So one is initially going forward first and the other one is also going forward first but in the opposite direction. So they are out of phase. We're gonna check 100 watts, 200 watts, and then 300 watts. So in a bit of irony in this video, in reversing the phase, you just saw that there was a 2 dB gain or just over a 2 dB gain from reversing the phase of one sub. So turns out I actually wired the sub uh, in the other box backwards uh, when I installed it, just completely by mistake. So in part of troubleshooting is had I had other uh, test data where I could compare, maybe I put the sub back in, um, it was a very different result. Uh, I have actually seen much, much bigger differences 
in uh, wiring, like if you've got them on the same plane in the same box and you wire one out of phase, a much bigger difference in output. So I think I'm gonna flip the box around so I can show you that. Uh, so you can see exactly what happens when you flip phase on the same plane in the same position, everything else. So it might make a little bit more sense. If you noticed before, the boxes were slightly offset and that was because of my wire length. Uh, so there's actually like maybe four or five inches where they were apart. So they weren't exactly the same distance from any particular thing. And that's going to make a difference uh, in matching our wavelengths and that kind of thing. So I now have the two of these uh, wired out of phase and facing the same direction. And they're in the same spot. So we should have a perfectly matched wave and you're gonna see the output result. Uh, I'm only gonna do this at one power level because it's going to be very apparent as to what's happening here. At the 100 watt level, as you just saw, with the sub being flipped around and one sub being wired out of phase, it did a 139.8. So that is our baseline for these that I've now swapped the phase. Uh, so one sub is definitely out of phase while they're both facing the same direction, the same distance apart. In the last test with one sub facing the opposite direction and the sub wired out of phase from the other one, at the 100 watt level we had a 139.8. So now that they're both facing the same direction, the same distance apart, uh, one sub is out of phase. We're gonna try 100 watts again. 139.8 is our baseline. Let's see what happens. That's a 116.3. 116, because they were both out of phase. 139.8, when they were both in phase. Now, if we would have had these at exactly the same distance apart with the other one flipped around, we probably would have seen this level of a uh, decrease. But because they were not precisely lined up at any frequency, the wavelength was not lined up perfectly. Because they're the same distance now, they are lined up perfectly. So we've got 180 degrees out of phase and uh, a 23 dB loss as a result. So. This is what happens when you have something out of phase. And if you have four subs where three more in phase is one is out, it obviously won't be this drastic, but there will be a loss. So it is something to check. And when you have something like this going on with two subs, you definitely have one out of phase. If you have a result like we did earlier where the boxes aren't exactly in the same position, uh, you'll have less of a loss, uh, but still a loss nonetheless. So now what we're gonna do is cover up one of the ports, disconnect that sub, and then we're going to pull the sub out. But first we need a baseline of the box being there, not playing as it sits. Now with one sub disconnected, we're gonna play 100, 200, and 300 watts again. The sub box is still in there, mind you, but one sub is playing. So we'll get our baseline result then we can make changes and test those theories. So there's our baseline testing. And another thing to remember is consistency. Now I just tested these one after the other. So rolled it up 100, roll up 200, roll up 300. If you're doing any testing like this, you have to do that consistently. If you leave gaps in testing, say five minutes before every time you play it, which at super high power levels where the sub might get hot, you would wanna do that. But you have to keep that consistent because if you have the sub cooling off between uh, burps, versus not, that can make a difference. Uh, if the sub is cold, uh, that affects a lot of different things and the suspension being cold as well. But make sure all of your data is consistent or you could be trying to troubleshoot a problem that isn't actually a problem at all, it's just the way that you are testing. So first things first, I'm going to cover up that port. 
do the same exact testing and see what result we get. All right, this port is plugged. Yes, it is bubble wrap. It is not going to uh, vibrate any type of sound in there. Uh, this could absorb some of it, but it, the claim is it's resonating through here, causing an issue. That will stop it from resonating. Let's get our test data at, again, three power levels. We want to make sure that all the stuff is consistent. You can't have just one data point. And we gained over 2 dB by plugging that port, which kind of goes back to the result that we saw before of it just sitting there causing a problem, which would indicate that there is a resonance happening inside the port, inside the box, whatever, that is causing that loss. Uh, there's just some kind of irregular resonance happening. But remember, with the sub playing, we didn't really gain much. Uh, where we should have gained three, uh, we lost quite a bit. Uh, and then filling that, we gained back two, but that doesn't exactly solve it. So let's take the plug out and then take the sub out as well. Uh, so there would not be any interference with the cone itself. There's no movement from there because the sub is removed and any type of uh, sound could pass through the box, um, through the port, through the opening. So now we've got the sub pulled out. We're only gonna play that sub. Uh, the plug is out of the port, so any sound that would be coming from the back can pass it straight through this box. And we'll see what result we get. And if you're wondering what eights these are, these are our ghost eights. Uh, they're sold as a pair only on emfcaraudio.com go check these out uh they are a musical sub they're not built for spl or anything but that's what we're using these for and uh so that's where we're at here and if you like what you see uh make sure you're subscribed to our channel and uh give this video a thumbs up so let's do our testing at the three different power levels and compare um with this setup now i looked it back at old test data and with the other box just sitting there we lost over 2 dB or around 2 dB depending on the power level. The higher the SPL got, the more we lost by that other box and sub just sitting there. Uh, with both subs playing, we only gained 1 dB when we doubled cone area uh, by putting the other box in but keeping the same power. So now we've got the other sub removed. This should act like only that one box is in there but the other box is physically in place. Let's try 100 watts. Looking back at our data, uh, with both subs playing, the loudest it played with both subs in the correct phase was a 139.8 at 100 watts. With the sub plugged, 141.1 at 100 watts, and uh, we're pretty consistent um, within a few tenths on power level uh, as we went up. And then with the sub removed, but the plug not in the port we got 141.1 again at 200 watts we had 143.2 versus 143.3 uh, 300 watts 144.0 and 144.2 so if we had just a hair difference in the power that could be that tenth or two tenths but basically we we're moving that sub or plugging the port we got the same result which was still not as loud as the box just not being there at all. So there is definitely something going on with a resonation in the box uh, just being there that is causing a 180 degrees out of phase or very close to or at least a lower amplitude 
that was causing our losses with it simply being there. Now remember, with both subs playing, it was just as loud as one sub playing. So there's quite a bit of loss still occurring by physically being there. It's just we can mitigate it without the sub playing, but when the sub playing, you still don't get the gains that you really should. So that doesn't exactly explain what's happening. There's still gotta be something with phasing that's happening uh, on that to where it doesn't increase the amplitude. Uh, we're still losing it. There's something going on that is still yet to be explained, but that is covering the solutions that you came up with or the ideas that you thought. And because this isn't working, obviously something going on we can't explain, we should try another box. So I'm going to install the other box that is two spec, the same as these two, but it's a common chamber. And we're gonna do the same testing with both subs playing and see what result we get. And this is the setup. And you might notice that one of these subs is inverted. Now, when this box was built, which was not, this isn't exactly how it sat in the car because I didn't have other things in here at the time, but they're also made for different subs. That This sub would hit that sub when it was installed. These barely clear, uh, so I could do it the other way, but the wiring is not set up to go inside and I didn't want to drill extra holes and all that extra stuff. So that one is inverted, but we're going to try phase both ways uh, on the side sub because they're 90 degrees out of phase. So we're gonna see what difference that makes, if any. Uh, but here's the box in the setup. We're gonna do the same test and see what kind of results we get. Well, that being a 128.6 at 108 watts makes me think that that's not the phase that it should be in. So I'm just gonna swap it immediately because that's pretty bad. And now the inverted sub is reversed phase uh, electrically. It's 180 degrees out. So we should not see a 128.6 again. We should have much louder. So 142.3, obviously a huge improvement. So now we know phase is correct uh, for having both of these subs in here. And we'll continue with 200 watts and 300 watts. So in this case, we still did not gain 3 dB by doubling power. Uh, now the difference before with two subs, uh, both playing same power level, we gained 1 dB and the more power I put on it, it actually went down to like 0.8 or 0.9. So not quite as much of a gain, but we pretty much gained 1 dB by having both subs playing with the other two boxes. Now this box, we've got 1.2 uh, pretty consistently on those. Um, so this box is a little bit louder, not a whole lot, um, but louder is louder. Now we could probably do a different layout, maybe take that inverted sub and put it in there the other way around and there might be a difference there too. But the fact still remains, um, part of testing is it has the same exact ratios, um, same port area, same volume, a little bit different position to gain 0.2. So that tells me we probably need to do a completely different type of volume, port area, that kind of thing uh, to do any better. Now, back into other troubleshooting. What if we know the numbers that it should be doing and it should be doing it consistently, but it's not doing it? Maybe a sub is damaged, maybe a sub has failed, maybe one coil has failed. We don't know. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna disconnect one sub and see what result we get. It should drop. How much does it drop? We'll find out. So now we've got the forward facing sub connected. The one on the side is disconnected. So we know our control and we're gonna do 100 watts. See what score it does.
So with one sub disconnected at 100 watts, we lost 1.9 dB. At 200 watts, we lost 3.1 dB. And at 300 watts, we lost 3.4 dB. So the mo more power we put on it, the more losses we had from that sub being disconnected. Now that actually would be acting as a passive radiator uh, in this instance, kind of, but that is a direct energy loss from the cone being moved or changing tuning. So we could possibly check other frequencies, uh, but if we were just testing and went, hey, this number is way, way down power for power, uh, we actually did lose uh, quite a bit. So you could go back and say, okay, something's wrong. Check all the subs. Is one disconnected? Is one broken? Anything like that. But having that baseline, uh, we now know what we're looking at. If it were only a few tenths, it could be something else. But if it's something more significant um, over 1 dB, like between 1.5 and, and 3 or even over 3 dB, uh, then you should definitely be looking at subs themselves. So what is our takeaway from all of this? Well, we learned if you have one sub on the same plane or in the same enclosure and it's out of phase, you're gonna have you know a 20 dB loss, which is gigantic. Uh, so you definitely know what's going on there. If you've got only uh, maybe two or three dB loss, you could just have one sub disconnected uh, instead of out of phase. Uh, so it's not working against each other, but it's not helping either. That also changes the characteristics of the box for that one sub. Uh, you're gonna have it, you have two subs in a box, that makes the box essentially double uh, what it was before, which is not the right spec. Mechanically, it could max out, cause damage, uh, any kind of number of things there. We saw that if you have separate enclosures, uh, you definitely need to have them lined up perfectly to get optimal gains, or if uh, you're having a problem like we're having where it just doesn't gain really what it should, um, in that case, uh, spreading them apart will minimize your losses. If you put them closer together, you're gonna have even bigger loss. Even changing boxes to where you have the same characteristics, same exact specs, uh, just firing a little bit differently or the subs mount a different way and the port in a different position can change the score. Uh, it could be a lot more drastic uh, in this case, it was only a few tenths, but there are instances where it could be a whole lot more for even having the same volume in the same port area. So that's one of those things you got to check is moving things around. I might be able to take this other box and I may be able to flip that other sub around or move it around a little bit if the amp was in a different spot and I could probably get a different result yet. So those are other things that you need to check, especially if you have consistent data that's somehow off, make sure your box is in the same position as it was before. And last but not least, we learned that just because you have an idea of why it might be down, you don't know that that's why until you actually test it, which is why you do a lot of testing and some things that you think should totally make sense don't, and uh, that can go good or bad on what ends up working out. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so you get notifications for all of our new videos, including the Tech Stuff Tuesday series. Make sure you go back and watch all the Tech Stuff Tuesday videos. Sometimes they'll answer questions that you may have uh, just from other videos where you learn some things. If you do have any questions about this video, make sure you comment those below. Also make sure you shop emfcaraudio.com where you can get the Low Baller Revision 1 pre-order, the Banhammer V2 pre-order, may start doing yellow v2s here pretty soon uh the ghost eights that you saw in this video uh, you can get them with or without the dust cap logo on those uh we also have high phonics mb court xs power sbc all that on emfcaraudio.com and you can hit up our patreon as well if you want to help donate and make these videos a little bit better make sure you follow us on instagram and facebook those are in the links below thanks for watching and i'll see you again in another tech stuff tuesday